Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about uh, an interesting subject. A subject that I have no stakes in, it is only based on a video game, and not real life. If this subject offends you, I don't really know what to tell you. Why did you click on the video? Anyways, this video is mostly rated by tenets, with sins, virtues, and religious doctrines being included as well. Holy sites may be in the discussion as well, if they give interesting benefits, as most of these dominations share like basically the same four holy sites and half the video would just be me explaining that Mecca is a Muslim holy site so I think it's a pretty good idea to avoid it. I'm also planning on doing a Ryuku World Conquest when I reach 2000 subscribers so if you're interested, go for it and subscribe. Anyways, let's start. Starting out with Hafizi, Unrelenting Faith, it's pretty good, plus four prowess, Plus 2 Faith Hostility Advantage. Members of Clergy can serve as Commanders, which is decent for this one. Since rulers under this faith actually appoint their priest, so you can just have a guy super good in Marshall be appointed as your priest, which is pretty good. It also has Struggle and Submission, which does allow Great Holy Wars if the faith does have a head of faith, which shouldn't be too hard to get, honestly. Every single one of its holy sites are really close together, so it should be decent enough to get. It also has Takiya. I'm so sorry. I will know none of these pronunciations. So this is probably going to be a pretty bad video if you actually know how to say these words. Which gives conversion resistance plus 30%. Honestly, not too helpful. I don't really lose counties often in my playthroughs. So that's the only case where this is really useful. It also gives you monthly intrigue lifestyle experience. Which if you know me, I hate intrigue. So I'm kind of mad on that one. In Doctrines, everything is decently normal. It also is Shia, by the way, in case of you're curious. This one isn't too bad. Unrelenting Faith is okay. Struggle and Submission is pretty good. This Takiya one is probably the weakest one on here. Sins and Virtues are okay. It probably is a pretty good high C, honestly. Nothing really stands out here to where it's super, super bad. So yeah, pretty good start here. Druze is a pretty interesting one here. I have played as his faith before. I don't really remember how it went, so it could have been decent, could have been bad, I don't remember. It has Gnosticism, which honestly, its benefits way underwhelm compared to its downsides. Considers other Gnostic and Dualist faiths to be righteous instead of hostile or evil. If you don't play the game and you hear that, you might think that's good, but there's like less than 10. Gnostic Adula's face on the map in both starts, so that's pretty useless. It also makes Temper to Virtue and Gluttonous a Sin. It also decreases Stewardship and adds Learning, which is not a very good trade, in my opinion. So yeah, this one's pretty bad. Reincarnation, County Conversion Resistance, plus 20, which, like I just said for the past one, is pretty bad. And it also has Dekia too. So this faith has plus 50% Conversion Resistance. Which is super useless. Yeah. Reincarnation isn't good. The Kia, at least from what I've seen, doesn't seem that good. You can't go on pilgrimages with this denomination. Pretty bad. Other than that, sins and virtues are basically the same. In doctrines though, monogamy is your marriage type, which I prefer. I don't really like having four spouses. Everything else in doctrines is pretty normal. Uh... This one is probably going into low C. I've changed my opinion on this. I'm actually going to put it in high D tier. It definitely doesn't deserve to be in C. Moving on from Druze, we have Elevism. In Tenets, Esotericism. Pretty good. Wise Man is a virtue. Children with learning may gain the Wise Man trait. So this one helps a lot. Literalism is also a very big learning based one where it makes various learning traits virtuous. I'm kind of liking this one right now. And the last one is Inner Journey, which allows you to meditate in seclusion, makes patient a virtue, makes him patient a sin. Okay. Marriage doctrines, everything's the same. Pilgrimages are forbidden though. You have a lot of sins, a lot of virtues. I'm kind of biased here. I kind of like it, honestly, just based on all the learning-based things. Um, yeah, I'm going to put this one in B. It's pretty good. 
Alawism is next up. It has communion, which I didn't know any of the Muslim faiths actually had. Usually that one's found in the Christian faiths. That's kind of cool. It allows characters to seek indulgences, which basically gets rid of crimes like adultery, um, deviancy maybe. I don't really remember them all, but yeah, there's two. Makes honest a virtue, makes deceitful a sin. Okay. Esotericism, like I said, I honestly have no quarrels with. I think it's decent. And reincarnation, this one has no downsides, but there's so many better tenets than reincarnation to pick. So just based on that, I think it's pretty lower tier, like like D tier out of all the tenets. It's going to be reincarnation. There's a lot of Muslim faiths where you can't go on pilgrimages, apparently, including this one. I've noticed that this one isn't really specialized in any way. Like, Alevism is specialized in the learning. This one kind of branches out in all areas. And thus it's a jack of all trades, but a master of nothing, really. This is a C tier if I've ever seen one. I'm sure you guys were clamoring just to hear me say this one. It's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna even try to say this name here. So this one has communion, which like I said is kind of strange for a Muslim faith. It does have struggle and submission. It also has the Takiya one. This one has got to be the one most similar to Catholicism. It has communion and it has the one that actually allows crusades. So that's kind of cool. Sins and virtues, normal. But all these are Zandaka, which means that it only considers other faiths that share their head of faith to be righteous, meaning that all these probably consider other ones to be astray, or hostile, or evil, or whatever. I honestly don't know. But this one is probably the weirdest one so far. It's just like Catholicism light in all its tenets, for some reason. If you really build up with it, I think it could be B. It could literally be just like playing Catholicism, but in the Middle East. So yeah, this one goes in B. Nazarism is most known for being the one Muslim denomination, which had a lot of assassins in it. It is fatwa. Rulers with high learning can condemn their sinful vassals. And if they're condemned, you can actually revoke their titles. Pretty good. Tekiya, which is not all these for some reason. I really don't like that one. But that one probably pairs pretty well with this Fedayeen one, which unlocks a Master Assassin core position. Which I have not seen, honestly. I don't know what that one does. If I had to guess, it either increases scheme secrecy or murder success chance, if I'm willing to guess. Likelihood of death or injury in battle plus 10, not too bad. Makes vengeful a virtue, makes craven a sin. This might be the only religion that actually has Ventral as a virtue besides the Sutru. If I'm wrong, just tell me, but I'm pretty sure it's the only other one. It also gives all miseries, plus 2 prowess, plus 01 piety per dread a month, and plus 5 control territory defender advantage. I guess it's decent enough if you're in Intrigue. I probably wouldn't play this one, unless it's for a video, honestly. This one, out of every single spot, I think it deserves most high C. Cormationism, it has anaconism, which like I was told in my last video, apparently a lot of people like and see use in. One of the doctrines is lay clergy, so it does stack pretty good. It gives temple building construction time, minus 33. Temple building's construction cost, minus 33. And it's the same for temple holdings, so it does stack pretty well. It has Gnosticism, which is pretty bad, like I said. Unrelenting faith, I don't mind it. For some reason, all of the doctrines here have basically been the exact same. This one barely sneaks in a D. This is future me, actually meant to say B. Quranism's tenets, literalism. Literalism is that learning one, which I was talking about, where it makes a lot of the learning traits virtuous. Pretty good. Fatwa. Rulers with high learning may condemn their sinful vassals, which obviously pairs super well with literalism. Takiya sucks <laughs> it really sucks middle c now we come up to one of my favorite muslim denominations in the entire game amohadism literalism pretty good struggle and submission a lost crusades and warmonger 
which basically gives you a positive opinion for being constantly at wars. Warmonger is super OP, and it's one of my personal favorite tenets. If you don't know, I actually conquered the entire Roman Empire, starting out as an Amohad, so, so that was pretty fun, and it was pretty easy too, honestly. You can just dominate the entire world. It's a part of the Sunni branch, you can't go on pilgrimages. But the only bad thing about this faith is literally just polygamy. If you haven't played as this denomination, please play as it. It's super, super fun. This one is honestly probably my favorite Muslim denomination in the entire game. It definitely deserves S tier. While going on with this list, I've kind of realized that a lot of these are very similar. Literalism, one I've already seen before. Struggle and submission, one I've already seen before. Takiya, one I've already seen before. So, honestly, just kind of okay. It isn't Sunni or Shia, but I'm not going to say that. I'll put up on screen, it's basically only useful for like other body faiths, which in my experiences are only really common in Africa. So okay, honestly, it's probably good for playing in Africa. Same doctrines, low C, really nothing interesting at all. Next up we have Najdatism, Tenets being Esotericism, which is kind of average in a vacuum, Fatwa, rules with high learning may condemn their sinful vassals, it kind of pairs with Esotericism, and struggle and submission, so it allows holy wars, and it's focused on learning. It also has that same a body thing, pilgrimages are allowed, same doctrines. So I'm thinking for this list, the D tier for the Muslim faiths, and the D tier for the Christian faiths are going to be vastly different. If this one wasn't the Christian one, it would probably be in high C, but since it's in the Muslim tier list, I'm probably going to put it in D. It's like barely specialized in a learning, and it's not even specialized that good. For this one, I'm actually going to bring up the holy sites here. So, Adina gives plus one diplomacy per level of devotion, and so does this other faith here. An An Najaf, <laughs> I don't know, I guess, also gives that. So, theoretically, you can have up to, I think, five levels of devotion, I'm pretty sure. So, so maxed out, you can get plus 10 diplomacy from this, which is super good for keeping your realm intact. In Tenets, it has legalism, which is basically just better literalism, honestly. Everything is better for this one. It has Fatwa which skews it towards learning with legalism. Takiya, like I said, I don't really like. It is Shia. Every doctrine's the same too. This one gets a B. It really seems like a super good realm stability faith. Maturidism is also kind of saved by its holy sites. It's one of Samarkand. Gives stewardship per level of devotion plus one, which is super, super good. That plus five stewardship could mean the difference from you only owning four counties to owning six, which could give you a ton of troops, a ton of extra gold. That's just super important. The tenants are adaptive, not really useful for you at all. It's only really there for the AI. Legalism, like I said, better literalism. Fatwa, okay. Sins and virtues are basically all the same. I don't really know why, but for some reason for all the Muslim faiths, their sins and virtues only slightly diverge from each other. I think that's kind of funny. It's Sunni, pilgrimages are allowed, everything's really the same here. I'm gonna give this one high B. Zaidism wants to be a Mohedism, but just isn't. It doesn't even compare. It's more conquest focused with unrelenting faith, legalism, and struggle and submission. It is Shia, everything else similar. At this point, I will point out if something's different, but I'm just going to stop saying everything else is the same because I kind of feel like it's going to get annoying, so I'm going to give this one a high C tier. Here's another one which I've never ever said in my life, so I won't even bother trying. It has a special tenet, Islamic rationalism, makes scholar a virtue, monthly learning lifestyle experience, which I obviously am quite a fan of, legalism, I like. Struggle and submission, I like. It's Sunni. Honestly, just for my biases, 
I really like this Islamic rationalism. I think it would be super helpful. And just for that, I want to put it in A. I think it's pretty good. Straight out of the gate, this is probably another A tier. Legalism, Warmonger, which like I said, I really, really like. And the Feta Yin one, which is that intrigue focused one. I don't really mind too much. The Faith doesn't go into intrigue to a point where intrigue is the only playstyle. It's obviously directed towards a much more aggressive playstyle here with the murdering and the conquering. It is somewhat a body-leaning one, which is probably the worst one out of all of them. But that's really the only bad thing. This one's probably going to get a low A from me. Basically, anyone with the Warmonger tenant is going to be a guaranteed A, at least from me. Now we're on to the final four here. Let's start off with Ismailism. Going into tenets. Esotericism. Makes wise men a virtue. Struggle and submission. Allows holy wars. Antikia, Conversion Resistance. Definitely not the best combination of tenets here. Definitely not. And this one here is the main Shia denomination in the game. It might be controversial, but this one is like low C. Nothing is really good about it at all, besides struggle and submission, but that's like but that's like the basic one for all these faiths here, so it doesn't really stand out. This is probably gonna be another controversial one here. So in Tenets, Communal Identity, and if you watch my video on ranking the Christian ones, you know that I hate this Tenet, and I see it as garbage, so that is not a good start. Next up is Adaptive, which I will say is a little bit better just based on the area where it really is. It's in Iberia, which is split in half between Christian and Muslim faiths, so it makes sense that it has it in Struggle and Submission, like always. It's Sunni. It definitely isn't the best one that we've seen so far. I can't believe I'm saying this, but this one also gets a low C. Nothing here is really impressive. As I'm going down this list, I'm slowly starting to realize that this might be controversial. Going into Abadism's tenets, literalism isn't the best one. Fatwa goes pretty well with literalism, so I can't really knock them both. Intakia, basically a waste. I don't know, pretty average, probably high C, almost low B. And here we go with the main one, Asharism. Legalism, Fatwa, Struggle and Submission. Fatwa is a strange one in this one, because it doesn't really lean too much into learning here. I do like Legalism, Struggle and Submission I obviously like. It's Sunni, obviously. It's the main Sunni branch. Everything is normal, obviously, considering that it's the most popular one. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but it gets like high B. There's nothing really here to knock your socks off in craziness or nothing. Especially after looking at all these other ones, you kind of realize how it doesn't really stand out that much, honestly. They're all basically the same, just with little variation, really. So yeah, there's my list. I'm sure you guys have questions impossible personal changes that you would make to my list. I wouldn't be too surprised if you do, considering how controversial I think this will be. Just remember that it's my opinion, and thank you for watching.